Relax, it's ASMR. Hello everyone. Well, it's been a while since I shot any videos here in the kitchen, but I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do so because I have unboxed that air fryer that the company Bugatti sent me. And I asked in the last video for suggestions for what I should cook, and chicken wings sounded like a very good option. So I purchased a chicken party wings pack, and we've got quite a bit in here. This should at least be enough for one batch, maybe one and a half. And it's pretty simple. That's kind of the whole concept behind an air fryer which is not really a fryer like a deep fryer, but is basically a portable convection oven. And the term air fryer just kind of caught on because it gives similar results to deep frying in the fact that it makes things crispy and uses hot air to cook them. And I'm really anxious to try the hot sauces that I got. They are specifically for buffalo wings. This is ghost pepper. It has all five little flames lit up. And this is habanero. It only has three. So I thought I would at least start with a three and use that to coat the wings once they're done. And then if I wanted to add some additional hot sauce, I could. So I'm going to unpackage the wings. I think they're still a little frozen, but that shouldn't matter too much. They've been in the refrigerator for about a day, so that should give them plenty of time to be mostly unfrozen. They're cold, but they're not too bad. So first I'm going to plate them, and then I'm going to switch around and show you the air fryer. So we just need to get a knife here and run it along the top. Pull it open. At least I do not have to make all these wings by hand and divide them and cut them apart. I just need to take them out of the package. So, yeah, these are still a little frozen down on this side. I don't think that'll be a problem. I may cook them at a lower temperature to kind of warm them up a little bit before I really start to cook them. So here we have the mixture of the two parts of the wing. The one that looks like a little drumstick, and the one that, I think that's still a little drumstick, it's just got a huge extra portion on it. And then these are kind of the one that has the two bones. I'm sure there is an actual term for that, but I cannot recall it right now. So, get these pulled apart. I have not used this air fryer yet. I read through the instructions. It seems pretty basic, which is an advantage. It's not super complicated. Okay, now I can get this out of the way. And I've got some paper towels here. A nice festive theme on them. Okay. So here is a plate of chicken wings. And I'm wondering if 
I can use this paper towel to like get some of these ice crystals off, which would just melt inside of the oven. And I don't know that that would be very productive. I think we just add a lot of moisture, which might stop it from crisping up very much. So what I'm going to do is put some paper towels down over here. Kind of dry these off. Get the moisture off of them. That's the one thing about freezing things, it definitely draws the moisture out and then it crystallizes all over everything. This is a good idea. That way we're not cooking ice, we're just cooking chicken wings. So while I'm doing this, I give you guys an update. Let me get a paper towel here. I am well on my way. With writing my thesis paper. I am halfway through my first draft. I am writing basically about two hours every morning on it. I'm averaging about 700 words a day. So I'm really happy with my progress. I've seen a few comments asking me to read what I'm writing, and I'm definitely thinking about doing that. I may wait till I get the first draft done, which should be by the end of this month, and then read you all what I have written so far. It's an awful lot of fat just sitting there on the side of that thing. And I'll cut that off later. So, I'm very happy with my progress. Of course, when I read it to you, it'll probably be the first time anyone's heard the whole thing. I've read a few sections to my wife. It's one of those things you're never quite sure. It sounds good to you, but you're the only one who's reading it, and you know your own brain and what you're trying to say, so of course it sounds okay to you. That's why it's important to get other people's input into the process so they can tell you what's not connecting or what's not making sense or maybe questions that it raised that I would need to answer. It's had a lot more water in it than I thought they would. And I don't think you're supposed to like season these with salt or pepper or anything. I think you just spray a little of this Pam on the um, basket and then start cooking. Definitely wash my hands after this to make sure I do not transfer any contaminants. And also wash down the counter in case anything got on that. So I thought about getting the 
traditional buffalo wing sauce. And I had it in my hand, the Frank's hot sauce, that you just basically use that and butter. But then I saw these two wing sauces. They promised to be super spicy. And I am a sucker for anything super spicy, so of course... I got those instead, and they were on sale, so... It's always interesting to me the way different grocery stores cater to different audiences. And the Harris Teeter, or one of the Harris Teeters in my area definitely has decided that hot and spicy things are not something to be avoided, and so they have a really good selection of hot sauces that I actually consider to be hot. Oftentimes, that's not the case. Okay, so get the obvious. Sorry about that. Get the obvious juices up. And then I'm going to wipe this all down. Then I will move the camera over so you can see the air fryer. Okay, so here is the air fryer. Um, plugged in, turned on. Up here you see we have some presets for French fry, frozen fries, fries, nuggets, steak, poultry, and fish. And you select those by this button here. It's a very loud beep, I apologize for that. If you wanted to pre-select anything. If not, you can use this button here to add the time or the temperature. And then that stops and starts it. And that is the totality of the interface. Very simple. So to get started, you just pull out the basket and it plays you a little tune. And I'm trying not to make a lot of noise here. That metal banging on the countertop can be pretty bad. So here we just have some nonstick spray. Quickly spray the inside of it. And that'll help them crisp up a little bit. And then we'll just place our chicken wings in here. I don't want to crowd them too much. But I want to give them space to have the air circulate around them. But I also want to make sure I get A lot in here, so I'm not doing several different batches. Okay, so I think because we're gonna shake this as we go and distribute them ever so often. So I'm wondering how many layers we could do, but. That'll be part of the experiment. Doesn't seem to be that many. It's only about halfway full. So I think that should be fine from everything that I've read in the instructions and online. So I'm going to try to carefully put this in here so it doesn't make a tremendously huge noise. And it plays another happy tune. And so now I want to cook them for, let's say, twenty minutes at three sixty. That sounds good. Now this is an air fryer, so there will be a fan that kicks on. And about every five minutes, maybe ten minutes, we're going to come and move the chicken wings around in the basket so they all have 
equal time exposed to the air. So let's hit start. And it blew out a little piece of packaging foam. So, as you can hear, it's not super loud. It is kind of just a general, gentle whooshing of air. And then chicken wings are on their way to cooking. So, I'll check back in with you guys in just a little bit. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and I'm going to get ready to take them out and shift them around. I increased the temperature and I increased the time a little bit after I consulted my recipe. So I want to make sure they get evenly cooked. So as you can see they've already started cooking and they are sizzling. And it actually looks like the ones on the top are cooking a little bit more than the ones in the bottom, which is interesting. So we want to make sure that everybody has equal time. So we're going to move those that are on the bottom up to the top. Okay, and then we just push that back in. starts back up again. Okay, so it's been a few minutes later. It's definitely very hot, but not uncomfortable like so. Okay. They are definitely sizzling away now. Grab some of these here from the bottom. Get that one back there. You can see there's a little browning going on. Definitely smells good. Feels like chicken is cooking. Okay, so we'll put these back in. Little tune. Okay, we've got about nine minutes to go. And they are really sizzling away now. I said to shake the basket to distribute them, but I don't think that would be wise with how hot this is. So I'm glad I have tongs. Let's move this up here. Make sure it has equal time at the top. And we'll put them on for the rest of the nine minutes. Okay, let's see where we are. Definitely taking on a brown color. Delicious sizzling sound. 
Now what the recipe said to do is to cook them for another about 10 minutes on 400 to make them nice and crispy. So I'm going to shuffle these around. Make sure they're not sticking. So it's, it's a good thing to keep them moving. If you just set them here the whole 20, 25 minutes, they would definitely be getting stuck and dried out on one part. So. I think it's a nice golden color. It was interesting to smell as it was cooking the change and how they smelled. It started out with kind of just a general cooking chicken smell like you would get for chicken noodle soup or something. And then probably in the last seven to five minutes you could really start to smell the browning smell of roasted chicken. Okay, so put that back in and we're going to let's do 10 minutes at 400. Oh, well, is 380 the highest it'll go? Let's cook it for a little longer then. Well, those look perfect. So I'm going to stop it there. Just turn it off. You can see we have a nice crispy golden color. Transfer this to a bowl over here. So, so far, these look awesome. I do have to babysit it a little bit with rotating the food inside of the basket. But the end product looks pretty awesome. And we have all the grease and drippings are in there. It's too hot for me to open up right now. But I'm going to put that back in there. Okay. Here we have our chicken. Let me see if I can move this. There we go. So here we have our chicken wings, and I'm going to start with the three, the habanero sauce. I think that'll be a good base. And then I'll put some of the super hot ghost pepper in here if I want to dip. This has a very traditional buffalo wing color to it. Interesting uh, slurping sound. So let's let me tell they have a nice crisp texture to them. And the sound. Make sure they all get really well coated.
Mm, wow. Yeah, the heat of the wings is definitely releasing the spices of the wing sauce. This is going to be very hot and spicy. I love it. Okay. Well, it looks like I have a delicious meal, or at least half a meal. I don't know if I can eat all of these. Thanks to the Bugatti air fryer. So I may make this a more regular part of my recipes, especially if I'm having like a party over or something like that. It's a nice way to make buffalo wings. So I'm gonna let this cool down and I'm going to have myself some supper. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, but please subscribe if you haven't. And thank you to Bugatti for letting me try out an air fryer. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.